Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Douglas, and I am here in the room where I do my reading in the morning. You can see my piano in the background, which is what I like to do sometimes also. But I've really missed our time together when we have our blankets and babies and pillows and after the bell rings and you guys are tired and, and just wanna take a rest for a minute. So I decided that I would like to start reading the chapter book that we planned to read before this all happened. It's the one that Levi found called a to Z, from the A to Z Mysteries series. And this one is called The Invisible Island. So I'd like to start with chapter one. It was written by Ron Roy, if you'd like to find another A to Z mystery. There's one for every letter of the alphabet, and this one is obviously I. So here's the first illustration. He's getting a phone call, and I'll start now. Donald David Duncan, known as Dink to his friends, answered the telephone. Duncan residence, Dink, Dink speaking. Get over here, Josh Pinto yelled. Dink jerked the phone away from his ear. Why, he asked. My mom says we can have a picnic on Squaw Island, Josh said. She made us lunch. It was a steaming hot July day. Splashing around in the Indian River would feel great, thought Dink. Okay, let me tell my mom and pick up Ruth Rose. We'll be right over. Dink ran up the stairs to his parents' room. His mother was sitting at her sewing machine, mending a pair of Dink's jeans. Hey, Mom, me and Josh and Ruth Rose are going to the river for a picnic, okay? Dink asked. Okay, but you kids stay together, she said. Thanks, Mom. Dink pulled on old shorts and his grubbiest sneakers. Before he left, he fed Loretta his guinea pig. Dink heard her squeak happily as he ran back down the stairs. Dink hurried over to the Ruth Rose's house. Ruth Rose's cat, Tiger, was nursing her kittens on the front step. Dink carefully stepped around them, then rang the bell. The door opened. Ruth Rose's little brother, Nate, stood in the doorway. He had a cookie in each hand and another in his mouth. Hi, Nate, Dink said. Is your sister here? Shoo, goof and muppy, Nate said through his cookie. Dink looked at Nate. What? Ruth Rose appeared next to Nate. Hi, Dink, what's going on, she said. Ruth Rose Hathaway liked to dress all in one color. Today, she wore blue shorts, a blue t-shirt, and blue sneakers. Her springy black curls were held in place by a blue headband. Josh wants us to go to Squaw Island for a picnic, Dink said. Ruth Rose grinned. Great, she leaned back into the house. Mom, see you later. I'm going on a picnic with the guys. Then she bent down and wiped cookie crumbs from her brother's lips. Nate, you go back with mommy, okay? I'll bring back a, a magic stone for you. Nate green, grinned and ran back into the house. Ruth Rose pulled the door shut. Then she and Dink cut through her backyard and crossed Eagle Lane. A few minutes later, they were at Josh's house. Josh was in his front yard holding a garden hose. His two little twin brothers, Brian and Bradley, were screaming and racing through the water. Hi, Josh said when he saw Dink and Ruth Rose. He shut off the water. Gotta go, he told Brian and Bradley. You two be good now and don't leave the yard. Josh grabbed his backpack off the porch. Hope you guys are hungry, he said. Mom packed a lot of food. Well, that should last you about three minutes, Dink said, grinning. The kids hiked through the field behind Josh's house. Then they crossed River Road and walked to the bank of the Indian River. The river flowed slowly, rippling over a few large rocks. In most places, the water was shallow enough to wade across. Trees and shrubbery grew along the banks. Birds and squirrels chatted in the greenery. The kids walked along the river, slapping at mosquitoes. They stopped when they saw a squaw island. The small island sat in the middle of the river. It was mostly sand, shrubs, and rocks. No trees grew there, and no animals made the island their home. But the kids loved the sandy beach and clean, shallow water. They waded in. 
wearing their sneakers. Soon they were up to their knees. Boy, this feels so good, Dink said as the cold water climbed his sweaty legs. He kicked water at Josh and Ruth Rose. They splashed him back and pretty soon all three of them were soaked. A few minutes later, they flopped down on the island's small beach. Dink took off his sneakers and wiggled his toes in the warm sand. Let's eat, Josh said. He opened his backpack and brought out plastic bags holding sandwiches, slices of watermelon and cookies. I wonder what it would be like to be stranded on an island, he said. Dink chewed his sandwich. Josh, we couldn't get stranded out here. All we'd have to do is wade back to shore. Josh had a faraway look in his eyes. Yeah, but what if pirates buried treasure here, he said. He dug a hole in the sand with his heel. How could we could be sitting over a chest filled with gold? I don't think there were any pirates in Connecticut, Ruth Rose pointed out. Why not? Josh asked. He gestured toward the vine-covered boulders in the center of the island. That would be a perfect place for a pirate hideout. Ahoy, mate, Dink said. Ruth Rose stood up. I want to explore, she said. She walked toward the water. I promised Nate I'd bring him a magic stone. What's a magic stone? Dink asked. He followed her to the water's edge. This is... Ruth Rose held up a smooth, pure white pebble. What makes it magic? Nate has a bunch of these in his room, Ruth Rose said. My parents told him if he kept, kept his room neat, the stone would turn them into nickels. The stones would turn into nickels. Josh joined Dink and Ruth Rose. He handed each one of them a cookie. And Nate believed them? Ruth Rose grinned. When Nate cleans his room, Mom sneaks in and takes one of the stones. She leaves a nickel in its place. The kids started walking along the shore. The sun felt hot on Dink's back, so he took off his shirt. Hey guys, look, Josh yelled. He was standing over a footprint. Someone else has been here. He grinned at Dink and Ruth Rose. Maybe it was Blackbeard. Dink stepped into the footprint. It was twice as big as his foot. I don't know about Blackbeard, he said, but whoever this was has really big feet. Look, here's another one, Ruth, Ruth Rose said, and another. The kids followed the footprints away from the water. They led toward the boulders in the center of the island. The footprints stopped suddenly in the front of a squat vine-covered boulder. That's funny, Dink said. What'd the guy do, jump over these rocks? Maybe he walked around them, Josh said. Dink and Josh began to circle the boulder slowly, looking for, one, for more footprints. Ruth Rose started walking in the other direction. Suddenly, Dink heard her yell, Hey guys, come over here, quick. Dink and Josh ran back the way they'd come. Look, Ruth Rose said, pointing down between her feet. Something green was poking out of the sand. What is it? Josh asked. Money, Ruth Rose yelled. Dun, 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 dun. Here she is when she found the money. And we'll start chapter two tomorrow. So I hope you'll tune in. And I hope that you'll listen to it at one o'clock because then it'll kind of seem like it's our normal day, right? Okay, guys, have a good afternoon. Keep reading, keep doing your work. I love you. I miss you. Bye-bye.